Hey guys, so in today's video, I thought we'd do something a little more different than I usually do on the channel. And I thought it'd be fun to take a look at MacBooks, especially in terms of design and seeing how they changed and how Apple kind of went backwards. Um, and we're specifically going to be taking a look at this through the viewpoint of the newest Mac that just came out, which is the M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros of 2021. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing this video. It's just a fun little video I thought we could do. And it's just really interesting to see how designs have changed. I have four Macs or MacBooks that I'm going to be looking at in this video. These are just the MacBooks that I had at my disposal. Obviously, there's a lot more MacBooks that you can take a look at and really see how Apple kind of went backwards in design, but in a positive way. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to be using the Macs that I have at my disposal. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started and take a look at the Mac. So the first Mac we're going to be looking at isn't that old, it is the 2016 MacBook, not the Air or anything because there weren't really any Airs, the last Air with the old design of Airs were in 2015. So in 2016 they did bring out the MacBook which was a 12 inch Mac which was really designed for portability and it looked a lot more modern than the older MacBook Airs. Now for this MacBook we have the wedge design that we're kind of used to with today's MacBook Airs, so that's when that design really came in. And the main focus of this MacBook was to be as portable as possible and for more non-heavy-duty tasks. You can also see how Apple kind of limited this Mac by putting in just one USB-C port. So this USB-C port was for charging or for maybe a hard drive or something, whatever accessories you wanted to add to it. But there was only one port and then you had just the headphone jack on the other side. So very, very plain just for the bare minimum and just for the most basic consumer. This was also the time that Apple brought in butterfly keys. So this MacBook did have Apple's butterfly keys, which at the beginning I actually really loved liked it and then after a while it kind of sucked and um, it was just giving a lot of problems. I did have to replace the butterfly keys on this Mac ones. So yeah, sticky keys was just a big problem with the butterfly keys and I'm really glad Apple, we're gonna get to that later, switched back to the scissors switch keys. This MacBook also came out when Apple started putting in bigger trackpads on their MacBooks, which I love. So yeah, this does feature the bigger trackpad, which is kind of the size of our palms. So yeah, it does feature that as well. As for the display, I don't really want to look at the specs. More in terms of design, we still had the bigger bezels that we're again used to with the MacBook Airs that we have today. So we just had the 12 inch display, though it was not 13 inch, 12 inch display with bigger ish bezels. It's not huge at all. It's way better than previous 2015 models of MacBook Airs and things like that. So way better than that. But yeah, that is the display that this MacBook had. Now I want to take a look at 2016 to 2020 MacBook Pros. So the design didn't really change in those years. The only thing that was mainly different between these years was the keyboard and the fact that they some models had the touch bar and others didn't. So they did have some options without the touch bar. But later, in the years it did become more like streamlined all the macbook pros had a touch bar so this was around the time when apple decided to ditch the ports and they solely wanted to focus on usb-c unlike the macbook that i previously mentioned we did get multiple usb-c ports but it was also all for charging or for accessories you didn't have a dedicated charging port like with magsafe and things like that they did remove magsafe sadly when it came to 2016 macbook pros now I really didn't like hate dongle life, like some people have like a hate for it with a burning passion, but it was a hassle that I didn't necessarily want to go through just because of all the dongles that you needed. I think Apple went into this thinking that other companies were also going to jump on the USB-C bandwagon and some did do that. I mean USB-C is way more streamlined nowadays, but we still needed basic things like SD cards which just haven't changed in the last few years. So SD cards was probably one of the biggest things that I was missing at SD card slot just because of how much we use it and there really isn't a better alternative. In this time we also got the touch bar. So first they had a model, a 13 inch model without the touch bar and then you had to pay more to have the touch bar and also the 15 inch did have the touch bar so they had the option for it and then later in the years of MacBook Pros they were becoming streamlined on all MacBook Pros. My M1 MacBook Pro has a touch bar and when the touch bar did come out, it caused a lot of controversy. So some people absolutely love the touch bar. I'm one of those people who actually enjoyed it. And then there are people who had a lot of issues with it. And um, I've never really had any issues with the touch bar. But with that being said, I only had my Mac from beginning of 2021 till now. So that's about like 11, 
10 months that I had it and I really didn't have any problems with it but I'm guessing if you have like an older Mac after a few years and it gives a lot of problems I can imagine that being very annoying since it's your function keys and they need to function so yeah touch bar caused controversy but some people loved it some people hated it it was just kind of divided with these Macs, we also got Touch ID introduced on the Mac, which I absolutely love. I'm hoping for Face ID in the future, but Touch ID is still amazing. So yeah, we finally got Touch ID, which is so much more convenient than typing in your password. And this time we also had the weird transition between the butterfly keys back to the scissors keys, which I'm very thankful for. So yeah, they also did kind of do a transition there as well, realizing that the butterfly keys weren't as great as they thought they would be. But as long as they changed it, I'm really happy. As for the displays on the MacBook Pros, they stayed pretty much the same. We have 13 inch models and 15 inch models. And also later, like in 2020, there were only 13 inch models. 15 inch models weren't really made, but there was one year that introduced smaller bezels, which came with the 16 inch MacBook Pros, which caused a lot of hype. And I thought the design was absolutely beautiful. So that is when we first saw what a MacBook could look like with smaller bezels. Design wise, these MacBook Pros didn't really change since 2016. They all had the same kind of design. They didn't have the wedge shape like the MacBook Airs or the MacBook. It was pretty much a straighter design. I don't really know how to explain this design, but it is absolutely beautiful. And with these years, Apple focused on getting them as thin as possible with the best spec as possible. So it couldn't be too thin since it's MacBook Pros, you need that power. But it was still not like thick that it made it look like a beast. <laughs> like the 2016 MacBook, these MacBooks also did not have the light up app logo at the front. Now, I personally have never had an issue with the removal of the light up app logo. I know it was iconic for its time, definitely, but I just never really was the biggest fan of it. They now have more of like a merd material that they put on for the Apple logo. And I highly prefer that over the light up just because it looks more premium. And I'm pretty sure that's the look that Apple went for. So the premium look of the Apple logo that has this mirrored finish is really, really nice. So that is all for the design of the 2016 to 2020 MacBook Pros. They all were pretty much similar, like I have mentioned. They had the same kind of design and everything there didn't change much. The only biggest change was with the 16 inch MacBook Pro that came out that one year. But now I wanna get to the 2021 MacBook Pros. Pros. So the 2021 MacBook Pros with the M1 Pro and M1 Max chip was probably one of the most anticipated releases of the year because we knew there were going to be design changes as well as spec changes obviously, but I was mostly interested in seeing the design and the rumors with the adding of ports again since that's one of the biggest things we've all wanted from Apple is the bringing back of ports. So in the event, Apple did deliver and they did bring back ports, which was amazing. So we now have MagSafe back again, which MagSafe is just wonderful. I absolutely love MagSafe. I've never had a MagSafe Mac and the little bit I've used it so far is just incredible. So we got MagSafe back. We have three Thunderbolt 4 ports, which you can use for like hard drives or you know anything. So three of those, we have a headphone jack, we have an HDMI port and we have our beloved SD card slot back. So I think the addition of ports was already a big like mind blower for everyone that Apple actually brought it back. And that was one of the things people were most looking forward to, especially the adding of MagSafe, which was really nice. But then also we got some more design changes. Something that I wasn't really expecting was that the keyboard kind of got a design change. So we now have a black panel behind it, which I actually think looks amazing. It looks so pro and just so nice. So it now has this kind of black panel behind it, which just makes the key stand out a lot more and is obviously still backlit and everything. The touch bar was also removed. And I know, again, there are a lot of conflicting feelings about the touch bar. So I don't really care that they removed it. As long as I have function keys, it's fine. So yeah, we now have a set of full height function keys that are not just like shorter than the rest of the keys. They're full height and they look amazing and I really don't have a complaint about it whatsoever. So yeah, we now have function keys instead of the touch bar and we still have touch ID on the MacBook Pros, which is really nice. And like I said, we're hoping for face ID in the future, especially with that notch. Now, while we're on the topic of the notch, let's talk about the display. So we finally got back smaller bezels on the MacBook Pros and I think it looks absolutely amazing. So we got smaller bezels, but with that, 
we also did get the notch. So I know this has brought a lot of controversy like most things Apple does, but the notch I really haven't had an issue with while using it and I think it looks pretty cool and it looks iconically Apple-ish. So that's why I kind of like it just because it's so Apple. But again, I get it that some people don't like it and people are upset that if they added the notch, why didn't they just add Face ID? But hopefully this will be the start of implementation of Face ID on the Mac. And we did get a better webcam out of it, so I didn't really mind it that much. These Mac Pros also had a design change with the body, so it is noticeably different and thicker than the previous MacBook Pros. The previous MacBook Pros kind of had a weird shape and not like the MacBook Airs, it's hard to explain but it had like a little curve and then went straight up where this MacBook, we just have it kind of like a box shape. It still has kind of a curve, but not as drastic as the previous MacBook Pros. And you can see Apple really didn't focus much on making this MacBook as thin as possible. And I actually prefer it so that we have better battery life and all that. So I absolutely love the design that we now have with the 2021 MacBook Pros. This design also reminds me more of MacBooks from the past, which I think is really nice. So we all know Apple has more of this retro look nowadays so this just adds to that so I absolutely love the design and the shape that it now has especially since with this shape and the thicker body we get so many more benefits the Apple logo at the front also is noticeably bigger than last year's models or all the years before that and I think it looks pretty cool so Apple logo is also a bit different this year now I want to take you back in time quite a few years back to the 2009 MacBook Pro. This is a 17 inch MacBook Pro. So this thing is absolutely ginormous, but it's so nice to have that big screen. And I mean, now we have 16 inches, which is kind of close, but the, the 17 inch is just huge. And we did have, still have bigger bezels, but yeah, so you can just imagine how big this thing is. It has a 17 inch screen with big bezels. So it was just like I mentioned ginormous. So the design of the 2021 MacBook Pros really reminded me of this old MacBook Pro that I had laying in the studio. This doesn't turn on or anything, so don't mind that, but the just the design that I saw when watching the event, it just really brought back old school MacBook Pro vibes. And this is just why I decided to make this video because I had this old machine and I just wanted to share this with you guys. I do think this design is more similar to even older MacBook Pros, but this is just the one I have in the studio. so. Just keep that in mind, but just listen to what I have to say. So as you can see, this MacBook Pro is an absolute beast. It is absolutely huge. We do still have the light up Apple logo at the back. And um, when it's turned on, it looks pretty cool and like iconic. But when it's turned off, I feel like it just kind of looks cheap because it's just this piece of plastic that's on it and i'm pretty sure if apple were to bring back and light up apple logo they'd do it better than that but yeah i just think it looks kind of meh when it's turned off so that's one of the reasons that i just don't really prefer the light up apple logo just because when it's turned off it just doesn't look as premium as this merd kind of finish but what really brought this design to mind when I saw the new Mac Pros was just the thickness of it because it did have a lot of chunk to it. And it's also just a really solid build like the new Mac Pros. With this Mac Pro, we also have ports galore. There are so many ports on this thing that is actually insane to think about nowadays when you look at the MacBooks and just see how technology has evolved. So on this MacBook Pro, we have multiple USB ports. We have Ethernet, we have MagSafe, we have Thunderbolt headphone and microphone jacks. We have a freaking disc slot where you can put in DVDs or CDs or whatever. And there are so many more that I'm not gonna pretend that I know exactly what they're for, but yeah, ports galore. And this was just a time when things were simpler and you had everything that you needed on your one device. So that's also something that I absolutely loved about this Mac. I did use it for a while before the battery kind of just like burnt it out completely. Um, so yeah, we had ports galore and was just Awesome. <laughs> we do have the scissor switch keys as well on this MacBook Pro, which I don't mind at all. I absolutely love the scissor switch keys and it just types amazing. And we also have function keys at the top and these are half width and not like the full size keys that we have with the near MacBook Pros, but I mean, still really awesome. And we also have a smaller trackpad, not the size as could fit our palms. So this was back when we didn't have huge trackpads, but 
I mean, still did a thing and it's also not forced touch. You can really like, it's actually touching. I think this just kind of resembles what we have now with the thicker design for functionality, more for looks. And then we also have ports, again, more for functionality than looks because I think that's really what Apple was trying to do. They were kind of streamlining the MacBook Pros and for a pro workflow, it's not about streamlining, it's more about the workflow and actually having it be pro. So I'm really glad that we got a better design this year that's more functional for pro users. And yeah, I'm really excited to be seeing what Apple's gonna be doing in the future with MacBooks. So yeah, that was everything I wanted to talk about about the new MacBook Pro and all the older ones that I had here in the studio. I hope this video was kind of interesting for you to see like the design of how Apple kind of went backwards with it, but in a good functional way. So yeah, that was my video on how Apple's design has changed on MacBooks. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did give this video a thumbs up, really helps us and the algorithm. So definitely give a thumbs up and comment down below if you have any other questions or just any thoughts on this. Definitely subscribe by clicking on the icon on the screen. Click on the playlist to see all of my other MacBook related videos and click on the videos from my previously uploaded video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.